welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is my Wednesday episode, and today we are going to learn how to make a crochet sampler, learning how to make a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet in preparation of next Wednesday, learning how to make a granny square. So um, we're going to get started. If you notice, I am wearing something different in the tutorial than what I am wearing here. It's because um, that tutorial was actually filmed for my library and I kind of putting two videos together here. So that was filmed a little bit earlier. That's why I'm dressed differently in that video. So with that, let's get started. I will show you what you're going to need uh, to do this project. And you're going to need some worsted weight yarn, which if you go to Walmart, any of those places, that's basically what you're going to find is worsted weight uh, worsted weight just means the thickness of the yarn. So we're going to be using worsted weight yarn. I am using cotton because what I'm going to be teaching you is eventually going to become a dishcloth. So um, I want it to be 100% cotton. This week we are going to be learning the basic crochet stitches. And I'm going to show you a couple of projects that are free patterns that based on the stitches that I teach you today, you could go out and make, and there's actually video tutorials to do those projects. So stay tuned at the end of this video for those links and information about those patterns, and I'll show you what they look like. Um, but next week, we are going to incorporate the stitches we learned today, and we're going to make a granny square, which can be turned into either a dishcloth, or if you make multiple granny squares, you could have an afghan. So that's why I am using cotton, because mine is going to be a dishcloth. So you'll need one skein. This is just a small skein of cotton. If you are looking for cheap cotton, you can find it at Walmart or any of the big box stores, Joann's, any of those places, they will carry cotton yarn. Um, however, a cheap place to get it right now is the Dollar Tree. Now, not in the store itself, but if you go onto the Dollar Tree website, um, you can actually order cotton yarn. You do have to buy three skeins of yarn, so it's three dollars, but that's like the cheapest that's that's the cheapest price going right now. So uh, that is over at the Dollar Tree if you want to check them out. Uh, you do have to order it and then go pick it up, or you can have it shipped to your house for an additional fee. But if you go pick it, it's, pick it up at the store, there's no additional charge. It does take a couple weeks to come in because it, it doesn't, it's not like right at the store. It has to be shipped there. You know, but if you want to make dishcloths in your future, that's just a deal that I ran across that's running right now. Now, the other thing you will need to make your crochet dishcloth, of course, is a crochet hook. So you can do this in three different sizes for worsted weight yarn. Now, my crochet hooks are in millimeters. They also come in U.S. sizes, um, and they also have a lettering system. There's three different ways they're sized. So the three sizes are a five millimeter, which is also a size U.S. 8, or an H. So any of those, and it's usually written right along this section, which is a flat part um, on the crochet hook or down at the base. If it's a metal crochet hook, it will be written right about in the middle. So this is a five millimeter, uh, a five and a half millimeter, which is also known as a US nine or an I. And the other size you could use would be a size six millimeter, which is also known as a J or a US 10. Any of those three sizes will work for your worsted weight yarn. So um, let's get started on the project and I will show you some basic stitches. So before we get started, I'm going to show you different ways you can hold your crochet hook. There are two general ways that people hold them. One is like this, which is pretty much like holding a drumstick. Um, it works fine. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever is comfortable. The other way is to hold it like a pencil. Now, this is the way I normally hold it, but because I'm kind of working with close quarters with the camera, I will be working like this because this takes a lot more movement because I'm rotating it more at a figure eight 
Yeah, this should move me on a smaller rotation. So that's what you're going to do as far as holding your crochet hook, whichever is more comfortable for you. Now we're going to begin by making a slip stitch. So you're just going to loop your yarn over so it's crisscrossed like that. And then take this left hand side and put it through the loop and pull it. And you can see this is going to create a movable loop. You're going to put your hook through the loop and then just snug it. You don't want to pull it too tight. You don't want to keep it too loose. Just snug. Then you're going to tension your yarn on your left side, just like you would with knitting. You're tensioning your yarn. And again, it is whatever is comfortable to you. I tend to tension it like this over and around, around my index finger, but it's whatever works for you. The whole purpose in tensioning yarn is to make sure, uh, number one, it makes it easy to grab the yarn from this area here. And it also keeps your stitches even. If you just had it flopping around, you would have loose and tight stitches and your finished project would be lopsided. So let's begin with our first stitch, which is a foundational stitch. You usually start all of your projects with some form of this and it is called the chain stitch. So I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer so you can get a better angle of what I'm doing. Now for this chain stitch, you are going to Tension your yarn and using your hook, you're going to go under the yarn with your hook, grab it by turning your hook slightly and pull it through your loop. That is stitch number one. You're gonna do it again, grab underneath, pull it through, that's number two. We're gonna do this a total of 11 times. So we have three, four, five, six, and you can see I'm using my thumb and my middle finger to kind of anchor this down and I just move it up as I go. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six. This is number seven, eight, nine and 10. Now we're going to put an 11th stitch on here because we need a way to get up to our next row and we don't want to use one of our stitches to get to that next row. So it's kind of an elevator stitch. So we're going to do one stitch. That's the elevator to the next row. So now we're going to begin a stitch called the single crochet. Now we like I said, have used this as an elevator stitch. This is the first stitch that is away from our hook. We want to insert the hook into the second stitch. So you'll see there's a loop. So here's loop number one, that's your elevator or chain up. And then this next loop is the one we're going to go into. So you now have two loops on your hook. You're going to grab your yarn pull it through the first, grab your yarn, and pull it through both. So we now have two stitches because your, your elevator chain or chain up counts as your first stitch. So this is our second. So now we'll go in and you can see right where we did that stitch because that loop is pulled up just slightly. There you can see it right here. And you can see the stitches inside that loop. So we're going to go to the one next door to it. We're gonna go in, grab our yarn, pull it through, grab our yarn again, and pull through both. That's number three. We'll move to the next chain. Four, five, six, seven. 
seven. Eight. I switched my hand so you can see what it's like using it both ways. This is stitch number nine we're going into. And number 10. So we've gone all the way across. We're now going to do another row of single crochet. So again, we need to do that chain up or elevator stitch to get us up to that next row. So there it is. And now we're going to turn our work. You don't need to turn your whole hook. Like with knitting, you have to literally turn all of your work. You're just going to turn the project itself. You're not having to move the hook at all. So this is our first, this counts as our first stitch. So we are going to, you can see now it looks like we have double loops because we've got our second row that we're working on. We're not going through a chain stitch now, we're going through single crochet. So this first loop, just like the, just like the row before, this already is attached to this stitch here. So this is stitch number one. We're going to go into the second one right here. And you're going to go through both loops. If you look at it from the top, you can see it has like a V. You're going to go through both of those like that. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to grab your yarn. I'm going to show it from the top first, then I'll show it from the side. Grab your yarn, pull it through both. You now have those two loops on your hook. Grab it again and pull it through both. So now I'll show it from the side. You are going into this stitch here. Go through both. You can see there's the there's the V right here and you can see that I've gone through both. Grab your yarn, pull it through so you have the two loops on your hook. Grab and pull through both. We're going to go through the next stitch grab, go through both, and we're going to work our way all the way across, and you should have a total of 10 when you finish. Now we've reached the end. I have one more stitch to go, but if you don't know where your end is, because this is one common problem that people have with crochet, is they lose track of where that end stitch is. You could put a little stitch marker right there that's removable so you can keep track, or you can just count. So we know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we know our 10th stitch and it is going to look a little slightly different just because it's not attached to a stitch on this side, but you can still see, if you look at it, you can still see a little V right here. You're going to go through there just the same as you did before. And there you go. You have 10 stitches and you have now done two rows of single crochet. So we're going to do one more row. We're going to do it identical. We're going to again put that elevator stitch or chain up as it's called and we're going to turn our work. We're going to skip this first stitch because that's attached to the chain up and go into the next stitch. So I'm going to let you do that on your own. Go all the way across and count your stitches to make sure you have 10 at the end. So we've now finished and we have three rows of single crochet. Now the next stitch we're going to learn is called the half double crochet. The stitches are different sizes. A single crochet is relatively short as far as, as, far as the height, as you can see. The next stitch we're going to do is a little bit taller, but it's not as tall as a double crochet or a triple crochet. So it is called a half double crochet. So it's in between the size of a single crochet and a double crochet. So our elevator stitch up, because it's a little bit taller stitch, instead of being one chain, is going to be two. So we're going to chain two stitches, turn our work, 
and we'll do the half double crochet. Remember, we are skipping this first stitch because it's attached to the chain up. Now to do a half double crochet, you wrap your yarn before you insert it through those doubles, uh, through that V or the hole that's been created. Then you grab again, you pull it through and you have three loops on your hook. You then grab one more time and you're gonna pull through all three stitches. So we'll do it again. You are going to yarn over, which means grab your yarn and your hook, go through the V, which you can see right here, grab your stitch, pull it through so you now have three, grab it one more time, and pull through all three loops. So that is our third. Here we come with stitch number four. Stitch number five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. and 10. Now you can look at this and you can see a definite difference in size of the stitch as far as its height when you compare a single crochet to a half double crochet. You can also see that it's a little easier to count your stitches because they're a bigger stitch. These are much tighter together and these have a little bit more spacing in here. So it's much easier to count. So we've gone our 10 stitches. Now, just like we did with our single crochet row, we are going to do our elevator stitch or chain up. But again, it is a chain two because the stitch is a taller stitch. We're going to turn. Remember, we're going to skip that first stitch because that's part of this chain up. So we're going to go into this second one. And it's like I said, it's much easier to see the stitches. You can see the definite little holes for the stitches. So we are going to go into the second one and we are going to go all the way across one more time. We're coming up on our last stitch and you can see this was that elevator stitch or stitch that we came up on. So you want to go into the little V. You can still see it. You just have to look a little bit closer, but it's right there. And that's our 10th stitch. we've now done two rows of half double crochet. And the interesting thing is you can see these two rows almost equal the three rows that we did previous. And you can see the definite difference between the two stitches. So the next stitch and final stitch we're going to learn is the double crochet. This is a stitch that is used probably the most often. There is a triple crochet stitch, but we're not gonna learn it because it's really not used as often um, and you can always google if you run across it but the double crochet stitch is used is probably the most popular stitch when we make our granny square next week it is going to be composed of chain stitches and double crochets so this next stitch like i said is probably one of the most popular it is slightly taller than the half double crochet so how many stitches do you think you're going to chain up as an elevator stitch you're right, you're gonna do three. So let's do three chains. One, two, three. Turn your work. Again, we skip, skip that first stitch because that's part of the chain up. It is very, very similar to the half double crochet. With one exception, you're gonna go through that loop, grab your yarn, pull it back through. So again, you have those 
three loops on your hook. Grab it one last time. So far, it's just like the half double crochet. This is where it gets different. You're going to go through only two of the loops. Then you're going to grab again and pull through the next two. So we'll do that again. You're going to grab your yarn, put it through your work, through that stitch, pull it through. So there's your three loops. Grab it, go through only two. Grab it, go through the other two. So we'll do that a couple more times. Go through two, go through two more. Wrap, go through the stitch, go through two loops, grab it, go through two more. And we'll go all the way across until we get to our last stitch. Okay, I am at nine stitches. Now you can see a really big difference now. Here's your single, your half double, but look at your double crochet. It's, much, it's taller and it's also more open. You can definitely see the stitches. It's much easier to count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're going to get this last stitch right here. Again, that last stitch can be a little hard to see, but you'll see the little crisscross, and if you look closely, you'll see the little hole right there, and that's what we're going to go through. So this will give you your tenth stitch, and sometimes it's a little tighter as well, but... Now we're going to do one more row of double crochet. So again, we are going to chain up three, one, two, three, then turn your work. You don't want to turn your work and then chain. Uh, it just, it doesn't work as well. So then you're going to skip again this first stitch. Remember, it's part of this. That was always my hardest thing to remember was that this was not my first stitch. I'm going into this next one right here. So we'll do this together. We'll go all the way across and then we'll see what it looks like as a final product. And there we have it. We have our sample. We have our three stitches of single crochet. We have two rows here and here of half double crochet. And then we have two rows of double crochet. Now I'm going to put up on the screen, um, I'll put it right over here, what it looks like if it is written as a pattern um, as a cro crochet stitch. So you have single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. So that is what it looks like. This is our little sampler so that we can begin next week and jump right into doing our granny square. Now I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you some projects that you can make now that you know these three stitches and the chain stitch uh, that you can start for yourself right now. Now that you've learned a couple of basic stitches, there are two projects, there's more than two projects, but there's two projects that come to mind readily that you can make based on the stitches that you learned today. The, the first pattern is called the Warm and Striped Poncho. This is all done with single crochet and chain stitch. This is a pattern that I designed and I will put a link down below to the pattern itself and I also, on my YouTube channel, I have a tutorial for doing this. Um, if you don't want to make it into a poncho, you just don't make two sides. You make one side and you could have a shawl. So, And it can be made little or big if you're making for children or grandchildren or if you just want something a little bit larger. So um, that is the warm and striped poncho. The other pattern is a pattern that has been around for quite a while. It's not one I designed. It is free. It is called the virus shawl, not in reference to our current situation. This pattern has been around for quite a while. Um, as I said, I don't know why it was named that. It just happened to work out this way. But anyway, it is called the virus shawl. It is by Julia Marquardt, and I will put a link to the pattern and again, over on my YouTube channel, I do have a tutorial for this pattern. And here's what it looks like. It is also a shawl. And it looks very lacy. I love this thing. I wear it constantly. 
And this one is actually made out of all cotton, so I can wear it in the summertime as well. So I hope you have fun with those two patterns. And like I said, there are video tutorials, and I will link everything down below in the description box so you can find the pattern and the tutorial to do it um, based on the stitches that you learned today. Come back again next week, and we will begin making our granny square, which can be turned into a dishcloth or into an afghan if you make multiple granny squares. So thanks again for watching, 